like must you hit yourself so hard be gentle just be gentle Hello, if you've never seen me before, hi, my name is Yuki, and if you are a returning subscriber, welcome back. Today I wanted to try out the RCMA No Color Powder. Please be aware that at some point in this video, my microphone shut off, which is fun, very fun. I had no backup batteries left over, so I had to run over to the store at almost 2 o'clock in the morning to go get some batteries. So y'all know it's love when it comes down to that. This bad boy right here, I've heard a lot about the RCMA No Color Powder. It's so many people rave about it. Makeup artists, makeup enthusiasts, beauty enthusiasts, beauty influencers. And I was like, what is the hype? What the heck? Until I got on beautylish.com and I saw the price and it was only $12 for a three ounce bottle. Mind you, Laura Mercier is $38 for a one ounce bottle or one ounce container. So a $26 difference and this this claims to have it all. The packaging says that it is the perfect universal setting powder for all skin types. No color powder contains absolutely no pigment, no perfume, no fillers, and will never alter your foundation shade or natural skin tone. It will set your makeup with a flawless finish that won't cause fat flashback. I actually put that to the test today. So I did set the highlighted areas of my face with the RCMA no color powder. And I also took a photo in the dark with my flash on with my iPhone 7's back camera. So you guys could see, does it really work for darker skin tones? I will admit I'm one of those people who does not buy into the hype. If something is really hyped up, I'm always very skeptical. If it's within my price range and I keep seeing people rave about it, I'll be like, okay, let me just try it out and we'll see what happens. So that's exactly the case with the RCMA No Color Powder. I'm wondering what the heck is going on. Why is everybody screaming and raving about this? So I decided to try it out. And since I'm low on my Laura Mercier translucent powder, I figured it was a perfect time to get the RCMA No Color Powder just to see what's up. I did also show a little bit of how to highlight and contour, what my preferences are, what I like to use and all that good stuff, how to get well blended, you know, get your face together and <laughs> snatched. <laughs> So if you guys would like to see how this trial run of the RCMA No Color Powder went, please keep on watching. I am so sorry about this, guys. This was one of those instances where my microphone had shut off and I had absolutely no idea. But I'm just applying the LA Girl Pro Concealer in Toffee to highlight, focusing it mainly to the under eye area, the bridge of the nose, above the cupid's bow, and blending it in with a damp Real Techniques complexion sponge. camera turned off but I'm back and I'm better <laughs> low key though toffee is kind of lit I've used it before but it was with a foundation that was too dark for me I think if I remember correctly I mentioned on snapchat that a key to flawless makeup is to get rid of excess hair, especially like to your brows and above your lip. And don't lie, we all have a little bit of peach fuzz, okay? But I have not gotten rid of these babies. So they're a tad prominent. The reason I say to get rid of them is because you always notice that the area above your lip will be a little darker, even if you only have a little bit of hair. So I like to get rid of it up to the upper lip. You've got a lot, like you, you guys can probably see it, but you'll see like a little shaded area. Not cute. Not cute. I'm gonna take my cream contour, which is the LA Girl Pro Contour Cream in Deep. And I'm only gonna be using the dark color. With my Real Techniques Pointed Foundation Brush, even though it's not a foundation, brushes can be multi-purpose. You don't have to use them for exactly what they say to use them for. Use it for what works for you. Just gonna, boom, done. Just kidding. Just gonna take a little bit more. I've already hit pan. I didn't realize how little the product was on here. Okay, so for the nose, I think what I'm gonna do to contour it is I'm going to grab a, hmm, I'm gonna do something a little crazy, a little out of the box. I'm gonna take 
my Sigma Small Angle E65 brush. Make sure to use the code Yuki to get 10% off at checkout on SigmaBeauty.com. Just saying. So we're just going to go down the side here. Why did I never think of this before? Should have used a light hand because this is really dark. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. I'm taking a Real Techniques, what is this? Detailer brush. And I'm just going to kind of go down here and make sure, don't forget to go up to the brow because naturally you do have a line going down the sides of the nose. I will go back in with toffee to get rid of some of that out overlining that I did. But for the most part, this is not too shabby. I'm gonna go back in with my toffee concealer and go right down the middle. And I'm gonna take this to the sides. The reason I'm bringing the concealer all the way on the nose right here, instead of just stopping here, is because I want to create an illusion of a smaller nose. And just in case anyone decides to come for me, you're trying to make yourself more Eurocentric by creating the illusion of a smaller nose. No, the base of my nose is bulbous. So no matter what I do, I will always have that bulbous like structure to my nose, no matter how much contouring I do. All I'm doing is making the bridge smaller, okay? Just gotta explain, cause you know, we're all uh, comment section superheroes. Okay, so, I've got that going there. I'm gonna go to the sides first, taking this up. As I'm doing this, it's also gonna blend out my um, contour of the nose. So, as I mentioned before, what I learned recently from Anita Brows is to pounce and then press and roll. I feel like it really helps to really get the products melted into the skin more. So far, from what I've seen with my experimentation of this method. So for the contour to the cheeks, I'm just gonna press and roll up. I don't wanna press and roll down just on this portion here. Be gentle with your skin. Some people do this and it's like, seriously, why? I'm gonna go back in with my toffee. The mistake I made was blending out my highlight first and then blending out the contour. I like to blend out the contour first and then go to the highlight. And that'll kind of restore some of the color that was lost when I pressed and blended up. Makeup is all about experimentation. It is all about finding what works for you. Don't make the mistake of thinking that people who are beauty influencers or you know, vlog, beauty bloggers or beauty gurus don't make mistakes with their makeup, they do. It's just a matter of correcting whatever mistake was made. So sometimes you really do have to think outside of the box. Sometimes you just really have to improvise. There is nothing wrong with making a mistake. We all will make mistakes, we're all humans. I don't care how long you've been doing makeup. I don't care how big of an artist you are. You're bound to make a mistake sooner or later. You guys, I'm so sorry. My microphone shut off. I didn't know it was off this whole time. And then I didn't have any batteries left over to replace the ones that were now dead. So I had to run out and go get some with my unblended highlight and contour. But it's okay, we gonna keep pushing. I got some now, so we're good. What I was trying to emphasize before it shut off was that you wanna make sure that you are not taking your contour and blending it down too far. The reason why is because you have natural hollows of your cheeks, you can go like that. It's a natural hollow of your cheek. If you take the contour color too far down, let's say towards the jaw, you will look weird. We're emphasizing what is naturally occurring with your facial structure. So when you blend it down too far, you're screwing with that natural symmetry that you have, if that makes sense. So that's why I was saying to push and blend up with your contour. You can just pat and that'll kind of keep it in the general location of where it's supposed to be. But for the most part, you don't want to push and blend down or else you'll get the color transfer onto um, on too far down to, towards your jawline. 
So I added more of the toffee concealer, especially around here, because as I blended up, my contour had transferred up, so it started looking weird. Um, what I was trying to mention also was also the fact that I like to place my highlight and contour colors at the same time, and I actually prefer to blend my contour and then my highlight, but for whatever reason, I forgot that I was going to contour in the first place, and I just went ahead and blended the highlight, and you don't want to do that. Um, you could if it works for you, but personally, it's just not practical for my own preference. It'll give you a very sharp contour. And I didn't actually take any concealer onto this uh, complexion sponge. I just took whatever remaining product was on there and I'm just tapping in and it's already giving me that that we want. The RCMA No Color Powder, I've heard so much about this bad guy. I probably should do a comparison, right? Like one side compared to like another color powder, but it's okay, we don't have to do that today. But already, the one thing I'll tell you that I don't like about this is the fact that it has one of these kinds of tops. I prefer the Laura Mercier where you just, you know, go in at the very top and you just get your product and you're done. So as you guys can see, it is straight up white. Yeah, it's a clear container that it's in. That's why I was like, mm, does this really work for darker skin tones? Because my skin has become very dry lately, I prefer to take a damp cosmetic wedge pat it into the setting powder that I'm gonna be using, and then just lightly press onto the areas that I'm highlighting. So that way I don't have too much product on my face and I don't have too much flashback. If you're setting underneath the eyes especially, you really wanna make sure that you don't have any creasing. So what I'm gonna do is take my Miracle Complexion sponge again, blend away any creases before I apply this powder. I'm immediately going to go into the RCMA. I'm just gonna press, and I press my setting powders in repeatedly until there is no more color on there. And I know a lot of people like to use a Sasha Buttercup, but what I've noticed about the Sasha Buttercup is the fact that a lot of people get flashback with it so i just never purchased it okay so i feel like it's kind of giving me the same effect that the laura mercier does except the rcma is way cheaper by the way i forgot to tell you guys i purchased the three ounce bottle and i got it from beautylish.com before i set the other side let me just get rid of the creases you want to make sure that you set it literally right after you're done blending. So we have set this bad boy underneath the eyes. I'm just going to set it to other areas of my face, like the bridge of the nose, a bit of on the forehead, above the lips, and maybe the chin. And then I'm going to use my MAC Mineralize Skin Finish in Dark to set other areas of the face. I actually don't mind baking the bridge of my nose because that area does get very oily for me after a few hours, even though my skin has become more dry. I think because I've stopped using drying agents now, it slowly begins to retain its natural oils, which is good. Because we all know as much as you may dislike your oily skin, that is actually what makes you less prone to wrinkles in your later stages in life so if you have oily skin you better thank god i don't bake for long i'm gonna take my sigma f37 spotlight duster and get rid of this bad boy here so to really shape the nose this is what will do the trick just applying more powder to the sides this is why i love cosmetic wedges one they are super duper duper cheap and two Having the ability to have a really sharp, straight edge helps. They allow you to get into places that a beauty blender or a cosmetic sponge does not allow you to. So I feel like I'm getting a similar look as if I were using the Laura Mercier. And for a $26 difference, that is big. So using my MAC Mineralize Skin Finish in Dark, which is like obliterated, so I'm gonna take this. I'm using my Sigma F10 powder blush brush. I prefer using this as opposed to a bigger powder brush just because it's smaller and I don't really like the big one that much. 
and just lightly patting. Now I'm taking my Milani Make It Last setting spray. I practically bathe in this stuff, but it works. <laughs> Using my Milani Tantastic Bronzer in Fantastic and Gold, I'm just gonna highlight. And I just blend this out with my finger. This is a Morphe M310 brush that I'm using. It's a fan brush. All right, guys, I'm done with the look. I'm going to turn the softbox off, turn my main light on, and then take a picture with the flash, and I will post it on here. So let me just do that real quick. Let me actually try to take this in the dark because I don't see any flashback, but my overhead light is also a light source that's casting on a highlight from the side. Okay guys, so we are back. I decided to take photos in the complete dark. So for me, there was no flashback. You might be thinking, well, your face is much lighter than your neck. Well, I have hyperpigmentation, one. Two, the light source is directly on my face. So wherever your main light source is at, you're gonna have that area be the lightest, everywhere else will be much darker. For me, when I notice flashback, flashback is usually only in the places that the powder has touched. So remember, I only set right in the center of my forehead, down the bridge of my nose, underneath the eyes, right above the lip, and right on the chin. The our CMA powder did not touch anywhere else on my face and you can see it's all even. For me, this is a definite thumbs up. Goodbye, Laura. You know, it was nice knowing you, but... So when my Laura Mercier is done, what I'm probably gonna end up doing is like packing a bunch of the RCMA in here because I love the packaging of the Laura Mercier. The RCMA is just not practical for me. So what I'll do is I'll probably just like, you know, put the RCMA right in here and hopefully you know be able to use it that way just straight out of this container so that is it for this video i hope you found it to be entertaining or educational whichever one whatever floats your boat if you like this video please thumbs it up and also comment in the comment section let me know what you think let me know of any videos you guys want to see from me and if you like you can subscribe to my channel go ahead and hit the bell to get notifications so every time a new video goes up you'll be the first to know you'll be vip we gonna be right here i will see you guys in the next video lord willing stay blessed bye